Well, hello and welcome to take three, I mean, of take two, I mean, the next Flight of Oktoberfest beers, together with my sinister, sister, potato, potato. <laughs> Part of the reason why I did round number two is because the first time I did not find the Flocktoberfest, way back in August, so long ago. Uh, and then when I was at Total Wine recently, I saw they also had the Rubens Fest beer, which I've tried in previous years, and uh, Hacker Shore, which is, which I only know how to pronounce because I saw it on the Craft Brew Channel review, and um, they said it's like one of the oldest breweries in the world, and it was their favorite of the Oktoberfest beer. So when I saw that, sweet! And then Hofbrau Oktoberfest beer, because I wanted four. Because... Because you're an even person? Because I'm a balanced person. The rule of threes. <laughs> the rule of threes. Yeah, I reject the rule of threes and substitute my rule of fours. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Is a triangle stronger than a square? Yes, definitely it is. Three. Yeah. I didn't say I... Well, no, I totally did. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, my sister is not... A beer fan. I mm -hmm. believe y'all have picked that up in previous videos. Videos. She's she's here for moral support and for us to laugh at. I mean, to uh, you know this. Well, I believe this is going to be your first ever fest beer or October yeah. fest. You've never had anything like this at all. So your experience with beer is what I've fed you before. Yeah, and then Budweiser Museum in Illinois and oh. Illinois. <laughs> And you then went to Dad. the Budweiser Museum? Yeah, that was a family reunion trip at one of the weddings. Oh, really? That must yeah. have been the wedding we left early from. Mm, were you guys even there? Uh, Whose was it? The last one in Illinois. Must have been Lens. Yeah. 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 We, we, we were there for the uh, rehearsal dinner and like the family party. But we left oh. the morning before the wedding. Oh, wow. Because we were headed up to Chicago for a vacation trip. Oh, okay. That just happened to coincide. Yeah, no, we, yeah. we did the museum with the whole family and saw the Clydesdales and got oh, our free cool. samplers and all that stuff. Yeah, it was really cool. It was. Ow, that's a loud one. Yeah. So we're going to remember to keep these in order so that <laughs> we know which one we're drinking from. So first the Hofbrau. So I believe three of these are Fest beers and two of them, or one of them, two of them. <laughs> three of them are Fest beers and one of them is a Meritzen. This is the Meritzen. Uh, that's also how the Craft Beer Channel pronounced it. Oh, it's darker. Yeah. Um, so the just quick background, the original Oktoberfest party beers were Meritzens. That is beers brewed in March, which is the German word Meritzen. And um, so they're brewed in March and then they're held over the summer and then served during the Harvest Festival. Um, so that's kind of the history of the Meritzen and why it's called a Meritzen. The It's a heavy, very malty beer, a lot of character. It's not a bad beer, it's just it might not be what you want to drink when you're having a huge multi-day long drinking party. Mm -hmm. And so instead of Meritzen's in recent times, they invented the Fest beer, which is a lighter version of the same, which can also be produced much more much more quickly. And, um, well, we got some differences already going on here. Mm -hmm. So let's just start on the left with the Hofbrau and uh, see what we see and see what we smell to begin with. I see yellow. There's not really hardly any red to it, so it's maybe, I would call this straw. Okay. What are you smelling? Fermentation, for sure. Good. <laughs> Give her a gold star. <laughs> I want to say it smells like lighter than a lot of other beers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's... Maybe some bready sweetness? Or sweet breadiness? Which that comes from the yeasty smell? Yeah, well... Bread or beer is pretty much pretty the much, same ingredients yeah. as bread, just with a lot more water. Okay. It it's even baked. Maybe yeah, maybe that's so, what it is. Yeah, we would call that the maltiness. So you're smelling the malts. Oh. The malts are the okay. grains. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm picking up a a pretty clean maltiness. 
Um, if anything, it's a little attenuated, like it, it's it's just there and then it's gone. That might be partially the glass, um, but mm -hmm. but I have given it enough of a head here. There's a little bit of a grassy funkiness to it, but it's really, really mild. It's mostly a really clean, dry malt. What are you tasting? Like kind of spicy. Hmm. And that might just be the carbonation on the tongue? Yeah. Yeah, that would be spicy. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. It doesn't have the worst aftertaste in the world. Um, I would say it, it tastes like it smells. Like it's an oh. honest smell and taste. Yeah. You say that you have that same sweet breadiness. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely light. You could drink a lot of these without having any problem. There's the tiniest bite of bitterness kind of two-thirds to three-quarters of the way through mm -hmm. and then maybe just an echo of that in the finish but it's a pretty clean finish and it yeah. does make you want to drink more that little bit of a bite at the end because <laughs> you know you want the sweetness again well or you want to drink more because the flavor never evolves enough <laughs> yeah i mean some beers take you on a journey and some beers it's just here's what i am hmm. or it needs to be a good companion to something Mm -hmm. Which, okay, that's where food pairings come in, but, yeah. you know. So you would, so you're, you're going to be thinking of this roast chicken, hmm. um, dark breads, uh, funky cheeses, um, uh, whatever, you know, those German pancakes, which are basically like a savory giant crepe. Um, so savory, heavy, farmhouse kind of, kind of foods are the foods it's going to pair with. Oh, okay, because it doesn't yeah. overpower them. Um, it it kind of flows in and fills them in, just becomes part of them in a lot of ways. One thing I noticed about the, the Hacker Shore is it had very little head when I poured it. Mm -hmm. I can get some head now that I, you know, agitated it a bit, but to begin with, it didn't. It smells the same as the other one. Uh-huh. To me, at least. I'm picking up a little more depth and perhaps some herbs. Swirl it around a bit, get some bubbles. Like in a circle. Yes, we're right-handed. It works better like that. And then give it a smell and see if it's see if it's a little more intense. Because I'm picking up almost maybe some mint or basil, like just just the the barest hint of it. Not like the basil's herbaceousness, but like mint's kind of you know bite almost. There's definitely some more depth to the to the maltiness. It's not just this kind of sweet bread there's something else going on in there a little more substantial mm. excuse me <laughs> <laughs> what can i say except you're, you're welcome, welcome. <laughs> i'm not getting that it actually smells i don't know if it's because that's still in my nose hairs mm -hmm. yeah you have a lot of them <laughs> well i'm related to a bedford right <laughs> you are a bedford am i Yes. yes, yes, you are. <laughs> you may have Maybe Rocky's have nose, but you have Bedford. <laughs> you had two sips. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this fumes, guys. <laughs> um. uh, reeling it in. <laughs> What's the taste? Like more syrupy? Okay, so a little th thicker, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. a little more sweetness. I'm getting a hint of some additional cracker added to the bread. Like there's there's something a little more um, direct grain than just this kind of sweet breadiness of the of the half bra. Yeah, I would say this one to me seems sweeter than this one. This one again, it. It just, it's very mellow. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'm interpreting that as the sweetness versus this, I can actually say, yeah, that's maybe sweet, which is maybe where They're the just herbal more to thing. It. So where you were smelling the herbal and I mm -hmm. couldn't smell it, that's maybe where I'm getting. Possibly. Yeah. How do you interpret, you know, Yeah. the, 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 the number orange. Mm -hmm. um, it might just be also this beer that there's more to it. Mm -hmm. uh, being that this is a real Meritzen. And being that it's actually, it's a German brewery mm -hmm. that has to abide by Reinhardtskabat, the German beer purity laws. Okay. And this is a Meriton, so this has followed all the rules of Meriton production. It was brewed in March. It was brewed using Munich's water. Um, 
and it was, I believe, lagered. They're lagers. Um, I believe it was lagered over the summer and then bottled um, late summer. So it would have to abide by all those rules. And so this is a beer that a lot of stuff has gone into, a lot of time, a lot of effort, and hundreds of years of history. This brewery is like 600 years old. Um, so there's just a lot more, I think, going on in this beer. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So let's move on to these. So these were both German beers, mm -hmm. and now these are both American beers. Rubens Fest beer and Black Ravens um, Flocktoberfest, which are both uh, Northwest um, Seattle area breweries. So beginning with Rubens. Okay, so I go from smelling this one. Mm -hmm. Smelling this one. This one smells like Cheerios. Interesting. Okay. What? Yeah, that'd be the malts. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the grains. This, I mean, they are cereal grains. Um, they're definitely... So Cheerios are going to be oat. And right. this is not going to have any oats in it. It's going to be just barley. 100% barley <laughs> malt bill. Um, but it will. it is a cereal grain, so they're still... Mm. You know, genetically similar. Yeah. This is back to a little bit thin smelling, but I would say it maybe smells halfway between the two. Yeah. There's still that herbaceousness, but the malt isn't as uh, developed, isn't as forefront. Ooh. Oh, that one has a juiciness. So I picked up maybe... Uh, that peach apple mix, yep. peach apple juice mix when I, I first swallowed it, um, like when it's first in your mouth, and then that kind of fades to the malt, and there's no bitterness, or just the, the slightest hint of bitterness on the yeah. tongue. Very small amount. Yeah, like now after, I don't know, taste or flavor or whatever those things we're having. Hmm. So it's just, a real clean finish for you. Yeah. There's, there's nothing left in your mouth. Not really. Interesting. I'm getting a little bit. Okay. Um, maybe dry crackers kind of down through the throat. You like the dry crackers. I mean, it's better well, than it's, stale crackers, but... I, so if you think of, in my in my mind, bread mm -hmm. is a moister mm -hmm. um, flavor, uh, malt. The, the, the grains in bread are kept moist. Mm -hmm. well, they're not actually moist. It's the fats, really, that they bound with. Um, but crackers are, are dry, and so it's a more intense... Um, but also in some ways simpler, depending on the grain, um, flavor. Okay. It, it might be more concentrated, more present, whereas bread, there's a lot of more nuanced, subtle things going on together. Crackers, fewer, more intense things. But I'm also just finding words to try and describe <laughs> offhand a very Your experiential sensation. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. What am I sensing? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, but that juiciness is really pleasant, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, on to Flocktoberfest. And this has been my favorite for two or three years. Um, just really good fest beer. Hmm. Excuse you. That was my stomach. <laughs> it was the inside gurgling juices. <laughs> you should have had dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, even when I eat, it makes that sound. It's not, it does not indicate that I'm hungry. You just have whatsoever. an active internal system. No, it's the internal system that's going, mm, I had too much beer. <laughs> you're, you're six sips in. <laughs> I almost smell the juiciness that I tasted with that one. Okay. Like there's a there's a, a fruity a fruitiness to the to the smell of this. Maybe uh, dates or figs. There is a difference in the smell, but I honestly can't pinpoint it. No. Yeah. Between, you know, everything that's here. Besides it smells like beer. Mm-hmm. Which means it's beer, so it's doing its job. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, they are all very different. Brown sugar, molasses, almost an, an acetone, like the slightest tinge of acetone from the Rubens. <laughs> yes, I know what nail polish remover is. But then this smells like fresh fields. That's 
Well, let's 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 finish this one, and then we can do the comparisons and rankings and stuff. This one's like falling flat. <laughs> mm. I remember what I liked about this one. Okay. What do you think? I can't tell the difference. <laughs> what do you taste? Can you describe what you taste? Similar to that one and the sensation of it being like spicy, which uh -huh. is just the carbonation. Mm -hmm. Less on the back end of it. So more of like a cleaner. Short finish. Okay. Yeah, short finish. But more syrupy like this one. Okay. So. Okay. So it's kind of falling between some things and around other things and yeah. Yeah. For me, I'm tasting like the Hacker Shore. Okay. I'm tasting a much more developed malt flavor. I don't know if they, they, they brought in a few extra darker, more darkly roasted grains. Just looking color wise, this is the second darkest of the beers. And right. as far as color, color comes from the primarily the darkness to which the malts were roasted. And so that's also going to tell you, you will pick up more toasty things. So hmm. in some ways, this tastes more like warm toasted bread than the two really light ones. So there's just a little more depth to the maltiness. Mm -hmm. uh, the herbal notes are still there um, and they're really balanced in there quite nicely. It has a similar juiciness to this, which feels like a more developed half brow. Uh, so the half brow is like really simple. It's delicious. It's clean, but it's really simple. Both of the American beers have just a little bit more. And I think that's what we're tasting is the juiciness. Mm, okay. um, but while this was like apple peach juice, this is more like straight apple. It's, it, it is a little bit simpler juiciness, but that's balanced by this much more developed and interesting toasty maltiness that you don't get, frankly, in either of these two and that might be hidden in this one. Um, hmm. But they're all super drinkable. Oh, yeah. As far as, so from someone who actually doesn't like beer, yeah, are these beers less offensive to you? Yeah. Is this something you would, you might actually, hey, I could actually enjoy drinking that. I wouldn't enjoy drinking it, mm -hmm. but I'm a, also a person who likes more the idea of like cocktails, so very fruity mm -hmm. and stuff. So if it was combined with something, if there mm -hmm. was a way, but I don't know if you can actually do that with beers. I mean, um, you can make beer cocktails, but. Exactly. But if true pure beer person would not be excited about that. <laughs> Hold the camera. Oh. Um. I have a whole book. I have a whole book about beer cocktails. Okay. Beer purists do make beer cocktails. Okay. Um, it is certainly not as common, and some of them are really weird, like you have to make a royal posset before you can make your lamb's wool. Ooh. Um. But no, there are totally okay. beer cocktails. Yeah. I would wonder, there is one beer serving method that involves taking a hot poker, like you, you heat a poker mm -hmm. in the fire, you pour your mug of ale, mm -hmm. and you put the poker in the mug for just a couple seconds. And because this is liquid grain, yeah. it toasts the beer and it produces this huge head on the beer obviously yeah. you know just it explodes um and the result is you've literally toasted your beer yeah and i would wonder how much these would benefit and that's that's, Be that's done with a very particular style of beer like that's that's how that beer style is served but i would wonder i would think these might actually really be enhanced by that and yeah. in particular tasting the toastiness from the flocktoberfest like oh i like that I think I'd probably like it more. Um, and the sweetness would make it kind of this, maybe not cinnamon toast, but you know, certainly a sweet toast. For anyone who loves cinnamon toast, 
it would not be anywhere close to Cinnamon no. Toast. But <laughs> if you're a beer person who <laughs> enjoys the illusion <laughs> of Cinnamon <laughs> Toast, <laughs> crunch. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but it would, like, yeah, it... Wines are the same way with me. I don't really enjoy them, but you can give me a bottle and say, "Oh, mm-hmm. this was aged with this and this," and I can, can acknowledge that 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 yeah. that yeah that that happened. Um, beer paired with you know pizza or whatever mm-hmm. that would be interesting or the cocktails. But yeah, these would be fine if you're not a huge beer person, but you want to fit in with the crowd. Yeah. Using any one of any one of these. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Fitting, I just in, wanna... fitting in with a crowd is never a good reason to drink beer. Valid, but if you go to Oktoberfest yeah. and your significant other wants to go to Oktoberfest, you'd be, and you'd be you you'd be in you'd be able to participate. You're in, in Munich, enjoy. Germany for the the you know only culture, time in your yeah. life. Yeah, you're gonna maybe order a beer. Heck I, for the freaking yeah. I probably wouldn't just because I just don't care that much. But <laughs> to the passing enthusiast, yeah. probably would. Yeah. So. Um, so despite not being able to tell any difference between these. Um, (laughs) would you be able to rank them like rate Mm -hmm. your rankings your preference Mm -hmm. which is the one you enjoyed the most and which is the one that you enjoyed the least um yeah i have to say it could be because my taste buds were getting numb towards the end Mm mm-hmm um, just because they're not used to the sensation of mm-hmm. it, that I would probably move this one, uh, that one, sorry, um, kind of down to the bottom because okay. it was a pretty big sensation. Um, As in your least favorite? Yeah, least favorite. Okay. And then these would definitely be up at the top and then that okay. one would be third just because it was nice yeah. and different. Um, but I would... Do you have a preference between the two Americans? Those two? Yeah. Right. Um, um, the Flocktoberfest and the Fest beer. I can't really say. I, I enjoyed the, the, or this one was definitely more syrupy. Um, mm-hmm. But is this the one that also, yeah, that, that okay. That was the toastiness, the toasty one. Versus this one was a peachy one? That was the peachy one, yep. Yeah, I prefer the peachy one. Okay. Just, I am more of a fruits person, so. Okay. So this is a beer tolerators <laughs> rating <laughs> of these four Oktoberfest beers. The Rubens Fest beer, in particular, she liked the fruitiness yeah. of it, the fruity juiciness. And then Black Raven's Flocktoberfest. And then the Hacker Shore Meritzen and the Hofbrau Oktoberfest beer. Um, I'm going to flip this a little bit, but not too much. And I'm going to preface it by this. All of these are good beers. Um, all of these are exemplary beers. I would have to put some thought into whether and how they compare to the other Oktoberfest beers I tried earlier this year. Um, I would guess that these would probably all fall to the top half of my previous ranking. Uh, they are all better than the ones that I was less happy with. And I believe the Breckenridge was the one that I ranked lowest in, in September. And the, I can't remember what the other one was. Um, these are all far better than that. These are all top half. For personal preference, I would definitely put the Flocktoberfest and the Hawker Shore tied for first and I would probably put the Rubens Fest beer and the Hofbrau Oktoberfest beer as tied for third because what I appreciated was these were simply more complex beers there was more going on in them and they still maintained balance so that left you with really interesting beers And when you're drinking a bunch of beer, you aren't necessarily looking for interesting. But if the beer you're drinking can be interesting versus one that's not, I'd rather have one that's interesting in a good way. Hmm. These are not bad beers by any stretch. Like I said, these fall all to the top half of my previous rankings. They are simply simpler beers. This one, the Hofbrauhaus, 
That is super clean. That is a very clean beer. That's just, it's super easy to just drink and drink and drink. And I believe it's a pretty low ABV. So you're not really going to be hurting yourself too badly. I'm going to, oh, it's 6%. So it's, it's relatively heavy, actually. I should look at those. Because that's more than the, um, eh, I won't go. Um, I'm going to eat those words. That's a really good beer. It doesn't taste like it's a 6.3%. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's super light, though. It goes down easy. And it's not going to conflict with anything you're eating by any means. The Rubens is just kind of an American version of that. And hey, if you're aping a super historic German brewery, heck yeah. Um, Hofbrau, I believe, is also a super historic ancient German brewery. So while this is like the oldest brewery in the world or something like that, that's still running today, Hofbrau isn't terribly far behind. They're both very historic, traditional German uh, breweries. And it feels like the Fest beer is is still to the simpler side of things and so kind of apes or mimics the Hofbrau. So that's my ranking. That's a beer nerd's ranking of these four. Should we have really started with this one since it was higher? Uh, oh, well, I doubt it's the highest. Um, <laughs> no, I'm curious. So 11.2, that's 5.8. So, so far, and this is 5.8 and this is... Uh, five. five. So this is actually the lowest at five percent. Yeah. Um, so well, we started our taste buds with that one. <laughs> but it's not the alcohol that's burning your taste buds out. It's the flavor. And so actually, realistically, I should have ranked. I should have done them in this order to begin with, starting with the lightest, so that your taste buds would be tasting a successfully strong, successively stronger flavor with each oh, beer. Okay. Um, but I also wanted to break them down by uh, German and American. Hmm. So, I didn't put a whole much of thought into that, but that's how it worked. Anyways, closing thoughts? It's beer. It's beer. And on that profound observation, this is Matthew and my sinister. We'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>